Today we're doing an excellence transport lab and there's two parts. The first part is on diffusion and the second part is on osmosis. So looking in part one, here's the procedure and there's several materials you need and we're gonna demonstrate all these steps so you could get the data that you need to do the questions. So here we are, here's our setup. And we have a couple cups, we have a couple solutions, syringes, string, dialysis tubing, and a couple other things. So the first step of the lab is to get two cups and mark them A and B on a paper towel as done. And then we're gonna take a dialysis tubing. Dialysis tubing is simply a piece of plastic and it's in a plastic tube, it's very crunchy. It is also semi-permeable, which means that only some materials could move through it. Typically only really small things because those tiny little holes are very small. So large molecules cannot actually fit through it. And we're gonna make this piece of plastic dialysis tubing into a cell and it's gonna represent the cell membrane. And we're gonna put solutions inside of it and outside of it. And those are gonna be those starch and iodine solutions that you see over there. So in the procedure, one of the steps has you take the tubing and fold over the end about one inch, flatten it and twist it nice and tight. The reason for this is we're trying to close off the end so the solution doesn't leak out. Then you're gonna take one of the strings and tie it very tightly around that folded twisted end of that dialysis tubing. Double knotting is a good thing. There we are, nicely done. So now one end is closed off. The next step of the lab is going to have us add a solution of very concentrated iodine inside. And to do that, we're gonna use a syringe. Notice how it's labeled in orange so we don't mix it up. And we're going to put the syringe into the solution and pull up the plunger and take in about 10 to 12 milliliters. Then very carefully, we are going to insert it into the dialysis tubing and put the iodine solution inside. Well done. Then we're gonna fold over the top end about an inch. And be careful, because you don't want it to make a mess. And what you're gonna do is twist it just like you did the first time Take a string and tie it off. This always works better with a partner. All right, it's inevitable that you leaked some all over the place, which is why we're gonna rinse it off because we can't have the iodine on the outside. And then you could take a piece of paper towel, Make sure it doesn't leak all over the place and bring it back over. And we're gonna put this cute little iodine filled cell into cup A. Then we are gonna take the starch solution, very concentrated starch solution, high concentration of starch, and we're going to cover the iodine cell. So we have iodine on the inside and starch on the outside. Okay, so before we move on to cup B, let's take a look at what we're supposed to put on our lab paper it is on the bottom you have four cups and you, we need to fill in the befores and afters. So for cup A, here's what we did, where we put starch around the iodine cell. So that little plastic dialysis tube has iodine in a high concentration and on the outside is starch which is that white color solution. Make sure you get this down in your notes. All right, let's move on to the second part where we're just gonna repeat the procedure and wow, you did that fast. <laughs> so it's all done. Our second cell is gonna be filled with starch instead. And now it's all rinsed off, ready to go into cup B. And we're gonna cover that one with the high concentration of iodine solution. Excellent. So coming back to this paper, we need to fill in cup B beforehand, and this is what you should put down. 
So we have the iodine on the outside of the cell and the starch is on the inside of the cell. Now we're gonna wait a few minutes to see what happens, but before we do that and show you the results, back on your lab paper, if you turn the page over, we need to answer question number seven and question number nine first, because that you're supposed to predict what's gonna happen. So number seven, based on the concentration gradient in cup A, what molecules will move? And the same question for number nine, but for cup B. So if we know that this is what we're starting with, you have four choices. The iodine's gonna move in or out, and the starch is either gonna move in or out. They're both gonna move, or neither of them's gonna move. So when we look at the first one, is the iodine gonna move out? Is the starch gonna move in? For this cup B, same thing, but reversed. You need to make a prediction on what you think's gonna happen before we show you. So make sure you pause and do that. But if you need help, because you really don't know, take a look at the top of your paper. We show you a picture of the both the molecules. This one over here is a picture of the iodine, the molecular structure. It's only four atoms. But take a look at starch. This is only a small piece of starch, but it's literally hundreds of glucose molecules linked together. That may be a hint to help you predict question number seven and question number nine. Before we show you the results of cup A and B, we need to show you something else first. So iodine is orange and starch is white, but when they're together, something happens. And so when starch and iodine come together, you're gonna actually see a color change that looks like this. So as you can see, it turned this really dark purple color. So when iodine and starch are in the same place, they will combine to form a purple color. And that is important when we go and look at the results. It's been about 10 minutes now, and we're gonna see the results of cup A and cup B, because we wanna see if these molecules diffuse down their concentration gradient through that selectively permeable membrane. Remember that this part of the lab is about diffusion of molecules. So looking at cup A and cup B, here's what you see on the inside. And we're gonna take those cells out and look at them a little bit closer up to see what's going on inside of them. So taking out cell A, you could see that the inside of it is still yellow yellowish orange, and that means that there's iodine inside. And that's what we started with. Now let's take a look at the cup. We started with the white starch as the solution on the outside, and you could see it's turned a light color purple. So that means, like we did over here, that they have combined somehow. Cup B. The cell has turned purple on the inside, and the cup is still that orange color of iodine, which is what we started with. So we cup A and cup B are the same thing, but we just switch what was on the inside of the cell and the solution that was on the outside of the cell. So we need to record this data, so come on back over to your lab paper and Here's the results that you should write down in your notes, the before and after. So for cup A, we started with iodine on the inside of the cell and the starch on the outside. And here was the results where we had the iodine on the inside of the cell and the starch and the iodine turning purple on the outside. And then for this cup B, we started with iodine on the outside and starch on the inside, and now we ended with starch and iodine on the inside, and we know that because it turned purple, 
and then the iodine is on the outside. So obviously some diffusion happened here. And what you need to do is take this data and come back to these 14 questions and use the data to answer these questions and also use your diffusion notes on your other paper as well. And that is part A of the lab.